What's up guys, my name is Karol and welcome to Ads Course, a place where you can learn the best digital marketing practices and web analytics tricks. Today I'm going to show you how to use Google Optimize to create and run conversion optimization tests on your website. You will learn how to set up Geo correctly and then we're going to run through all three available tests. Then I'm going to talk about how to analyze these tests and draw conclusions. If you want to watch more tutorials like that, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Before I show you how to create experiments using Google Optimize, I will quickly run through the installation process. So first of all, you need to create your Google Optimize account right here. I will skip this step because it's very easy. So after you create your account, you will have your container over here. So let's go into our container. And here on the right, you have your container setup window. And first of all, you need to connect your uh, Google Optimize account to your Google Analytics account. And you can do this over here. I already did that, but if you click over here, you can select your Google Analytics property from the list in this drop down, and you can select a view to connect. And that's it. The second step is to add Google Optimize to your website. And right now, there are three different methods to do that. The first one is to add a snippet to the Google Global Site tag, just like this. The second solution is using Google Tag Manager, and I will show you this solution in this video. And you can also implement it by modifying Universal Analytics tag. So let's go to the Google Tag Manager account right now. I'm in my Google Tag Manager container and I already have this tag over here, but let's create it from scratch. Just simply click new tag. You can give it a name. And now click on this tag configuration box and simply select Google Optimize. And now you need to paste your Optimize container ID and you can find it in Google Optimize account. And here you can find your Google Optimize ID. So you simply copy this and paste your ID over here. And you can select your Google Analytics settings. I have this variable in here. If you don't have a custom variable, you can just paste your Google Analytics ID over here. And now let's create a trigger. You may select all pages if you want to have Google Optimize installed on all pages, or you can select your own trigger. Okay, now simply click Save and Publish. And after that, you may go to your website that you want to test and use the Google Tag Assistant extension in Google Chrome to just see if your Google Optimize tag works okay. And in here, we can see that it works fine. And this is the simple demo website that I will be working with. This is my face. So I will create Google Optimize experiments on this website. Okay, so we just installed Google Optimize on the website. So let's click done. And now we can create our first experiment. Simply click here, create experience. And right now in Google Optimize, we have three different experiment types. The first one is A-B test. And it's actually an A, B, N test because it's not only A versus B. You can have a C, D, etc., etc. So you can have multiple variations. And here we have a multivariate test. So using this experiment, you can test different sections and combine them. So the system will actually shuffle the variations that you created and create another variations, combinations. And we have a redirect test, which is a simple redirect. If your IT team created an alternative URL of the page that you want to test, you can just simply enter your redirect URL and test it like this. And we have a personalization option, which is actually not an experiment. This option is a little bit different because you can show a different page to different user targets. For example, if some event occurred, so you could uh, show a different page variation to these people, etc. And in this option, you don't have an end date, so you can run this all the time. Before you run any tests, it's actually a good option to think about what you want to test and which elements you want to change and what do you want to see using the experiment. So actually, before you go into Google Optimize, you need to think about it because you need to have some hypotheses first so that you could check them and run an experiment using Google Optimize or any other testing tool. The first two experiment types, A-B tests and multivariate tests, they use the built-in website editor in Google Optimize. So you can actually make changes to your website without, without coding knowledge. So you don't have to make any changes in your code. You just use the built-in editor, which is very simple. 
and I will show you how to use it in a minute. And with redirect test, you simply put in your alternative URL or path. The A-B test is good when you want to compare variations of the same page, but with different solutions. For example, your landing page or product page and see if any changes like button colors, text colors, elements, make any changes into your results. With multivariate test, it's a little bit different. You create sets of variations and the system will combine them together and create other combinations. So for example, you can create variations with different call to action button color and different call to action button texts. And the system will actually combine all the colors with all the texts and create combination of variations. And the redirect text is good when you want to test like more advanced changes on your website that required coding and IT work. So let's create a B test right now, just to show you. Let's give it a name, a B demo test. And here you put your URL to the page that will be your editor page. So in my example, this is a one page website. So I will just put my URL over here and let's create an experiment. Okay, so first of all, we need to add our variants. So create the alternative versions of the page using the built-in editor, which is very easy. So let's just add the first variation and you need to give it a name. And I will actually recommend to give it a real name and input here the changes that you will make on this page. So for example, I want to change a text on my website. So let's put the text name in here. And I will show you what I mean in a second. Okay, so we can see that we have our variation in here, but we have zero changes. So let's edit this variation right now. And right now we are redirected to the Google Optimize Editor. And as you can see, we can edit all the elements over here. You can see all the HTML elements like links, containers, headings, paragraphs, etc. So we can edit all of these using the editor. So just to show you, uh, let's change this text over here. You can do this in multiple ways. For example, just left click on this element and you can click in here. You could remove it. You could edit text, edit HTML, insert an HTML or run JavaScript. I would recommend to use edit HTML rather than edit text because it's actually easier to edit this without any problems. If you know the basics of HTML, it won't be a problem for you. So let's change this text to why me and apply. And as you can see, the changes occurred in here. We could also right click on this element and click edit text and we could change the text like this and click down in here. So it's as simple as that. You could change all the other texts on this website without any problems. And after you clicked on this element, you can also change other parameters like, like text font over here, like text pixels, font type, and the colors, of course, and other parameters. I won't do this now. You can save the changes when you're ready. Okay, and now let's create another variation just to show you how to change elements like colors, So let's say for the purpose of this tutorial, in this variation, I want to change the color of this button. So after I click on it, we have this option over here and you could change parameters like dimensions. So you could change the button size, the location, but I would actually recommend to be cautious when you change dimensions or location and see the preview, which I will talk about later in this video, just to see if there are any er errors on the website. So I want to change the color of this button. I could change the text, of course, but the color is here in the background because it's the background of the button. And you can just paste your color over here or you can change it in here using this option over here. So I want it to be green. So let's make it green, like nice green, something like this, for example. And that's it, the color changed. You could add a border to it if you want. Let's say this is all I want to change. You can change the colors of the other elements as well. Uh, what else you need to know in here is that you can select a CSS also in this option over here. You can change the CSS. Here you can expand this edit option to be visible if you close it. Also, if you like, you can test redirecting to different URLs. You can change the URL, the destination of this button over here. But what if you have an element that you want to change that are only visible after you make an action, like pop-ups, for example. 
or some other dynamic elements. Like in this example, I have a menu in here, but I can't edit it right now because it's you know like hidden. We need to expand it. And to do this, you just simply click in here and now you can have an interaction with your website. So I have expanded this menu over here. I simply click exit and it's still expanded and I can change elements over here. For example, change the text in here, whatever. Okay, I would actually recommend that you would change one element at a time or one type of changes at a time. So for example, only change button colors in this variation because it will actually be easier to know what kind of changes made what effects. Now let's create another variation just to show you that you can also delete element from your website. Okay, so for example, in this variation, I want to delete this, this section over here. So I simply select this container, which you can see, and I click here, edit and remove. Of course, be cautious when you remove elements from your website and preview your changes if any errors occur. Okay, but we don't have this element right now, so you can save this. And like I said, I would recommend to actually preview your changes and you can do this in here. You can have a standard desktop preview an iPad preview and a preview on other and a preview on other models. So you can see your changes on different devices or different models. So in this variation we only deleted one section and we can see this section over here which is okay. But from my experience only previewing your changes in this preview option it's not enough. I would actually recommend to run a test if it's ready and then simply preview a live test because some errors may occur only when the experiment is live. This tool is not, of course, perfect. If you like, you can also uh, add a bulk changes into some sections. So for example, if you have uh, elements like buttons, you can change the CSS of these elements in bulk. You can, you know, have this element selected and you add a change to a style, for example, or an attribute. Okay, so we're done here, I think. So let's click done. Okay, so we've created our variations over here and you can change the weight of the test. So for example, you may select the original to have a 50% split of the users and others less than that. Or you can do it equally like in default. Of course, you can add other variations and now you just simply select your page targeting. So when this variations will show up and this example is simply when URL matches my website because it's an one page website and you can edit this over here you can select different rules for example when your url equals something so for example you could add a different urls over here and actually be cautious in here so that your experiment won't run on a urls that you don't want it to so for example if you want to have an experiment that will run only on a certain product page right just to see the changes on one product not on the whole store then you need to put your url of this particular product over here not like a url that will match any other product okay so in my example it's okay and you can check your rule over here and put your like url and see if it's okay it's okay, so we're done here. And what you can also do is uh, select the audience targeting because right now this test will run on all the users that meet this targeting rule, but you can select like an audience only. For example, only users from your Google Ads account or from particular campaign, ad group or particular keywords from Google Ads. You can select only users from like mobile device category or tablet or desktop. You could select a behavior targeting options. For example, your remarketing list, a geographic uh, options for people from a specific city or technology, like people from a certain browser, particular OS. And you have more advanced options like query parameter, data layer variable, JavaScript variable, first party cookie or custom JavaScript. So in my example, I will just run this test on all audiences, all users like this. And you can add a description to your test so your like team will know what you're testing here, what is your hypothesis, what you want to check in here. And here you have your measurement objectives, uh, you have your Google Analytics account connected, and here you can select your objective, something that you want to track these variations, how will they affect my objective? So your objective could be a Google Analytics goal or custom objective. So if you choose from the list, you will see your Google Analytics goals in here. For example, this is my goal. And you have this default objective, bounces, page views, or session duration. So let's select this goal. 
and you could add additional objectives also. So for example, let's create a custom objective. It could be an event, a Google Analytics event, like with event category, action or label or value, or it could be a custom page view. So you can create your own custom objectives. I will go with my Google Analytics goal and you can add additional objectives, for example, like bounces. Okay. And now you have your final settings. Our optimized installation is okay. You can turn on the email notification and you can allocate a traffic because in here we just edit weight between the variations. But here you can specify if you want to run this test on 100% of the users or like 50%. If you, if you have a very large website, you could run it even on a 5%. Okay. And you can change the activation event. It could be a page load, but it, it could be also a custom event. So let's leave it a page load for this example. And you simply start your experiment over here after you preview your changes, of course, or you can schedule your experiment over here. And this is how you create an A-B experiment in, in Google Optimize. Right now, I will quickly show you how to create multivariate test just so you'll be able to know what it's all about. So let's give it a name. Let's select this option over here and let's click create. And like I said before, in multivariate tests, you can combine different variations together and create another variations, combinations of variations. So in this example, I want to combine different button colors with different button text. So let's rename this section. And let's rename this section to button text so that you will see what I'm talking about. So this is an original variation. This is an original variation. And let's create another variation. I won't create them in editor so that we won't waste any time. I will just name them so you will know what I talk about. So let's say it will be button green in this variation. I would create another one and button red and another one button blue okay and now let's create the variations with different texts so this one will be by now text on a call to action button another one would be like try now and the last one would be let's say something different like okay Okay, so we've created our sections and our variations. The system will actually create total 16 combinations of our variations and will combine. Like you can see this here, it will create like original, original, original by now, original, try now, green, original, green by now, uh, red, try now, etc. etc. So it will actually create all the possible combinations from your variations. And you can have maximum of 16 total combinations. And the rest of the settings are the same as in the A-B testing. And after you run your experiment, you will see the reporting over here with data, with actual data. It may change with time. And I would actually recommend you to wait until you generate enough data to make conclusions. And you can actually see your experiment data also in Google Analytics, which would I actually recommend you to analyze them in there. Because with Google Optimize, you will get a lot of you know recommendations and the system will actually try to pick the best option uh, for you. But you can actually make your own analysis with Google Analytics and use the segments, which I would actually recommend you to do split and analyze your data in different segments and see how it changes in for example in mobile users or desktop users or new users the returning users so you can actually segment these users and you know split your analysis okay so now you're ready to increase your kpis with google optimized testing if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment under this video also don't forget to hit the subscribe button i hope you enjoyed watching this video and see you in the next one